Hey everybody, welcome back to We Are Podcast. This is Camp Slash Horrorcast Season 2, Episode 24, Funny Game. If this is your first time checking out the podcast network, we appreciate it. Please head over to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, or iTunes, and give We Are Podcast Network a like. And just a reminder, Camp Slash Horrorcast is a weekly live video cast available on Twitch and YouTube. We go live every Monday at 8 p.m. Central Time at twitch.tv backslash we are podcast network and youtube.com backslash we are podcast network. As the Camp Slash Horrorcast is live, I will not be editing the audio for this podcast. So what you saw live is what you get here. Please come watch the stream every Monday at 8 p.m. And if you want to see the previous streams, go check out our Twitch or YouTube channel. And for a full list of future films we'll be watching, please head over to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at backslash we are podcast. All links can be found in the description. And with that, on to the horror cast. Hey everybody, welcome to Camp Slash Horrorcast, where we talk horror movies from the past every Monday at 8 p.m. Central Time. I'm your head camp counselor, Duck. I'm here with other head camp counselors. We have Jay. So much stress for politeness sake, McClintock. Jay, how are you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. I am well rested. You want to pull out that lightsaber again and show it off for everyone? <laughs> Maybe okay. later. Beast mode, beast mode. Next, we got David. I mean, what do you think? You think they stand a chance? Jessup, David, how are you, sir? I'm good, sir. Excellent, excellent. And finally, we've got Isaac. Whether by knife or whether by gun, losing your life can sometimes be fun. Dog it. Isaac, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Doing excellent. Thank you for asking. We watched Funny Games. That's right. 2007, directed by Michael Henneke. I think that's how you say his name. Also written by him. This is a shot by shot remake of his 1997 film of the same name, Funny Games. Release date March 14th, 2008, in the United States, with a running time of 111 minutes, budget 15 million. Box office, $8.2 million. Wah, wah, wah. Synopsis. When Anne, husband George, and son Georgie arrive at their holiday home, they are visited by a pair of polite and seemingly pleasant young men. Armed with deceptively sweet smiles and some golf clubs, they proceed to terrorize and torture the tight-knit clan, giving them until the next day to survive. I will show a tiny bit of the trailer uh, because <laughs> it pretty much gives away the whole movie. So with that said, let's check out Rated R for fun, funny games. Let's see what we got going on here. Terror violence in some language. Yeah, no nudity though. Let's play a game. Isaac said earlier this shot took forever. (laughs) It was like a car commercial. Yeah. It's like a car commercial, dude. So what's really cool, and we'll get into it, is they recreated the house completely from the original film. So when I say shot by shot, I mean shot by shot. There's someone here. Hello. Sorry to disturb you. I'm staying next door. Please, come in. Wow, that's a really great set of clubs. Mr. Farmer. What? Ah! You want to call someone? An ambulance? Or, or the police? Why are you doing this? The game is simple. Please. I'm Paul. Pick a family. Make a bet now. You bet. That Making you'll it be sound like a happy and family, Rob. You bet that you'll be dead. <laughs> Any is this the music from the original trailer? The yeah, oh yeah, this is the original trailer. Oh my god. Any, meeny, miny, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I think there's enough of that. <laughs> so that's the trailer, and it basically goes on to tell the entirety of the fucking movie, up until the epic gunshot at the end. So, skipping all that, that's what we did. History with the movie. Jay, do you have any history with the movie? Yeah, I was quite the, uh, I was quite the, the movie snob in my late teens, and uh, hung out with quite a few people that were already in college at the time. And uh, so we, we actually watched the original, the original funny games back in like 90, 98. And we all felt very hoity and hoity for being so (laughs) cultured. And then uh, 10 years later, I got back into that scene, watched a few movies, like kind of in the same vein of that kind of chaotic kind of terroristic world. 
Uh, there's a French movie called Love Me If You Dare. It's a very famous. Uh, it's a very famous movie. It came out, you know, maybe a few years before this. But yeah, and I got to say this one again. I was like, yep, they finally did it. They made an American. Like it's one of the few American movies I think really just kind of holds up because I mean it's literally the exact same movie. It's the exact same movie, shot by shot. There are like minor discrepancies in the shot, but it is next to nothing. Like it's crazy. Uh, how about you, David? What's your history with this? You ever see it before? Uh, I I like Jay was a movie am still am a movie snob, um, so I saw this on IFC actually the original, and then um, I watched the uh, remake, um, and uh, I, I completely pointless remake. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's shot for shot. I I see no there. I mean it's just it's like why why bother? And they they took it in the shorts, man. One of the uh, movie companies that produced this totally went bankrupt. Because they lost so much fucking money on this thing, um, yeah. so yeah, I, I just I never understood why. Because I remember watching the American version and being like, "What's is the point?" Just because Americans are too lazy to read subtitles, is that why we're doing this? <laughs> Damn right. You know, you know it's yeah. it's just it it was so weird how it was. I mean, it's it's technically amazing that it's shot by shot, um, but yeah, it's uh, this is not a, this this movie is like for me like uh, Requiem for a Dream. I think it's brilliant, but it's not enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, 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 really? Okay. We'll definitely get into that. I'm very interested in hearing you. Hot take. Hot take. Oh, yeah. All right. Isaac, you suggested this movie. You wanted to watch it. What's your history with it? So uh, I am not a movie snob, but I saw this movie <laughs> once, probably three years ago. Uh, and I was literally drunk and hanging out, and somebody was like, "You ever seen this? Let's watch it." I guess they wanted to ruin my evening, <laughs> but uh, it did. Uh, I didn't know until recently, until you told me actually that it was a remake. I thought that that was the original film, so the fact that it's a remake, it, I think, is astounding. But also, it's uh, very much like Requiem for a Dream, not enjoyable to watch. You're we glad when it's over. We call this a day ruiner, is what this is. This is one of those yeah. movies you watch and you're just like, oh, wow, the, the dread and the terror and all that stuff just is a wonderful blend of nightmare juice, I like to call it, that just kind of ruined your day. Um, yeah, so what was the reason that you picked this movie specifically, though? Because I'd never seen it, so I was excited when you kind of picked it. Uh, is it always stuck with you after that, or what is it? Yeah, and I'm not really a fan of horror movies in particular. Uh, I, I thought Boo! it was interesting. Boo! <laughs> Boo hiss! Boo Well, I don't know. Scared enough of what happens inside all the time. So. Yes, uh, understandably. And don't be afraid, man. We're a horror cast, <laughs> and we're not going to judge. Don't worry. Uh, it's horror light, but it's, it's, it's thriller and dread. And it's that wonderful subgenre of uh, home. What is it? Oh, geez. Uh, home, home invasion. Home invasion. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, There's a whole subgenre sub sub -genre of that horror movie, yeah. Whole subgenre of horror movies. This, this could be like the granddaddy of them all, you know, because all the ones that, because most of the ones came after this. Am I correct, Jay? Uh, no, I would say Last House on the Left is the granddaddy oh, of Home Invasions. Yeah. Yeah. I, I stay, yeah, you're right. You're right. And for me, Home Alone. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Comedy wise. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking there was a, remember Full Moon Productions? They had Sunbeam Productions where they made kid friendly movies. They did That's a Home funny. Alone. Uh, parody film where they had like little robots and stuff. I don't know if you ever saw that, but it, I was thinking about that all day today. It was weird. Anyhow, back to the movie. Let us discuss it. Uh, let's start with David. I'm curious about this. Not liking it very much. What's going on with that? Um, it's it's okay. Let me let me give you an example. Okay, so over the weekend I watched uh, Ouija: Origin of Terror. First time I've ever seen it. I think loved it. it. <laughs> yeah, loved it. Scared the shit out of me. But it was fun. It was a fun, scary movie because it's a Ouija board and it's demonic spirits and it's a girl crawling on the ceiling. It was fun, scary. This is too real. This almost felt like a snuff film and it's uncomfortable. And the thing, the thing is, the thing that make, makes me mad about it is that when you have ex an experience like, like this, I think you need to have a payoff where one of the good guys wins. You know, there is no, nobody wins, man. And, and I know that you find out that this is actually just a play on violence in the media 
and he's just watching a game and he can rewind it and it's not real. But at the same time, though, you it's like the director puts the audience through this ringer, but yet you don't get the payoff of getting revenge on these fucking assholes. By the way, I'm a huge fan of Michael Pitt. Love Michael Pitt. And I and I love Naomi Watts and uh, the lead guy. Oh, I forget his name. Tim Roth. Uh, yeah, Tim Roth. Uh, lo- I mean, the actors are great. It's I mean, it's a it's a fantastic movie. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm just saying I don't like it because it's not enjoyable. It sounds like it's doing its job, though, if you yeah, don't like it. it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I Listen, if the director made this movie for people to enjoy, then he's fucking twisted. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he, he definitely did his job, and he's holding up a mirror to the uh, violence in media. But as a, as a viewer, this is just not a fun experience. This is no, I'd be really not. concerned if somebody was like, this is my favorite movie. I watch oh, it that's, every night before I that's go to bed. What, I got to watch Funny Kids. I was when, when we watched this, I was like, what sick motherfucking psycho picked this movie? Because I was, <laughs> and when you and when you said you did, I was really worried that you'd be like, yeah, man, my friend, we, we had a party and we put this on and we, we all got our dicks hard. So we were like, let's jerk each other off. Man, this movie is fucking hot. And then we had, just had this raging orgy because everyone was turned on. You guys like to fuck when you watch this movie? Is that, no, no. So I'm glad I'm glad that you also don't find it um, <laughs> enjoyable. I, think I do think it's a really good movie. Oh, yeah. But no doubt. No doubt. It, this is the second time that I've watched it since then. So I think that there's something to be said about the realism of it. And that's the whole time I was watching. It was like, this is realistic because people are courteous and people do and want. He says, you know, the politeness line. I can't remember what it was. All, the, all this for the sake of politeness. People do want to be it's a great line. And, it, and it has that undertone to it where, you know, at first she's just trying to be nice. You know, she saw him with some friends who, which their friendship is probably superficial. It's probably on the surface as it is. You know what I mean? And, well, you, you, you get that the, you're they're going from family to family. Right. You and know? they know that these families have no tangential connection. Like it's all superficial politeness. And that's what it's about. And these villains are that way, too. The entire time they're superficially polite. They live within the society where we pretend to be nice while doing terrible things. I think that's the wonderful, I mean, not so subtle subtext of this. And I think it's real. Like, it feels real. Like, the husband is taken out with a golf whack to the, you know, golf club whack to the leg. That's realistic. Like, if somebody fucked up my back, I wouldn't be able to do anything. I think I would have fought a little bit harder than this motherfucker. But, you know, whatever. At one point, also, he in the pussy, so... Also, there's an underlying like racial element to it where if these two kids were black or like thuggish looking, there's no way they get in the house. There's no way they're allowed to come in. You know, yeah, they're so wearing the fact, gloves. Yeah, they're wearing. So, yeah. And so you have these white guys who are wearing gloves and, and look like, you know, their friends and neighbors. They br- allow them right into the house. Yep. That's, it, it comes down to the richness of it. I love that scene when they're discussing. Uh, their motives behind it. There's no motives behind this. They're just doing it because they're psychopaths and this is what they want to do. But I love that entire scene where he's like, he's white trash. His mom, he sleeps with his mom, just all these insults. And what works better, this movie doesn't work well. He keeps calling him tubby. That guy's not fat at all. And all I could think was like, maybe it was like he used to call him that or he, it's a psychological game that makes sense. But in the original version, the second guy, the, the, the underling to the main uh, bad guy, he is t- he is kind of pudgy, so it makes sense that he's calling him puppy. But in this version, I was like that didn't really work. Uh, Jay, how about you? What do you what do you think about like all this, the villains and like <sighs> the dread of it and all that? Um, I think that you know, first of all, this is definitely a Mormon cautionary tale where you know if someone's knocking on your door, you know, to to do a mission trip, you obviously should never answer it. And right. so I've, I'm just kidding. <laughs> really kidding. Right, right. <laughs> Do you like how serious I got? No, yeah, uh, yeah, was, no, no, it made sense. This is, though, clearly, like, it this is, is like absolutely Mormon. clearly oh, uh, a tale mm-hmm. of now. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, too. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think that what I really took from it is uh, there was another movie that came out mm, about two years before the remake. And it was, uh, God, don't, don't, I think it's Gus Van Sant. It's a movie called Elephant. Oh and yeah, we just Columbine. talked about elef- we just talked about elephant the other day on the so if you, podcast. If you so one of the things that, that uh, to 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 kind of veer off of this movie, mm-hmm. uh, elephant is was a very deliberate filmmaking style in the way that um, the actors chosen uh, were were not, not actors. Uh, 
were not actors. They were yeah. very much very green. And so he really wanted to kind of capture the the essence of the like, real teenager, the real teenager, uh, you know, and it's just. Yeah. And so it was Gus Van Sant. But anyway, uh, it's basically a retelling of the story of Columbine. And uh, as someone who is, you know, I was 18 years old. I was in high school when Columbine happened on 420, 1999. And there's this certain feeling because I saw the original movie a year before Columbine happened. And so nine years after that, I watched, or, you know, 10 years after that, I watched this movie. And I see a lot of those same sensibilities and a lot of those same kind of motives uh, from the killers of Columbine. This movie is terrifying. This movie is absolutely terrifying. And, you know, we'll get to the climax at the end, but I think that um, I think that in a lot of ways, like this, this movie, it, it's going to shake you if, if you're, especially if you're in the right light, it's going to shake you. It's going to stick with you. And uh, yeah, that's, that's basically my, uh, my take on it. What, one of my, one of my biggest fears is not protecting my family. Um, you know, I have a wife and I have two dogs. I don't have kids, but it is, it is a fear, the fear of the home invasion. And right. it, it's something that always freaks me out. I have a loaded gun in my house. Um, we have cameras and an alarm set up. We've never had an issue, but I just don't want to be ever be in a situation like this movie. You know, absolutely. And it makes you realize how easy it is by so using easy. a household object to turn the tide, and how much we trust on a polite level the people around us. And that's the thing: is the news. I know it's an allegory for the news and, and media and, and violence. But the news is polite and it gives you terrible uh, information in a polite you know, manner. And that's what it comes down to. And we as people, we act polite. We give people the best of us, or at least for the most part, we try to. I don't think any of us in this cast alone gives anyone the bad side. Of we always try to give the good side, right? No, I, I so, fuck everybody. I, I, all right, fuck everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's so crazy how quickly, like I saw at work the other night, there was a knife sitting on the, you know, in the dish pit. And I was like, you know what? Some motherfucker could just pick that up and start stabbing people. And like, how crazy would that be? But we have dangerous objects around us like that all the time. And what if somebody was a psychopath and decided to use that against you? Especially whenever they come across in a flight manner, it just scares me. Isaac, I want to talk to you about like the sense of dread and horror that you got from this movie. You, you said you don't like horror movies so much, but this one stuck with you. What was it about that? Like when you watched it, you know, hanging out with your friend that, were you guys just like, holy fuck, this is crazy? Or what was it? Well, this is the realism of it. Like, immediately, like, the man who, you, it, you know, as you're watching it and you're realizing it's getting worse and worse, you're like, oh, well, dad's about to come in and it'll be fine. And they just nerf the character immediately. Right. So uh, now what, he is, have... what, is, what does nerf mean for the oldies Kill. in the room? Kill. Like a video Take game kill shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get yeah, the video dude, game term. all the power away from. Okay, like, just for like the now J instead in the of room having then? real bullets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, singled out. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, so, but, but yeah, yeah so from then on, like, it, he's in this terrible situation, and yeah, they're younger and stronger than him. There's two of them, and he is broken now. And there's not really anything he can do. Like, you can argue that he should have fought harder or whatever, but it would have just hastened the inevitable of the film. Which, well, and, you know how it's going to end basically from when it starts, which is why I imagine the trailer gives away the entire thing. Also, the, this movie, um, the way he dismisses his wife when they first come in, because when he first comes in and sees him, she's freaking the fuck out. Yeah, and he immediately takes their side. He's yeah, like, he's oh, like, honey, "Why are you being so why, rude to them wrong? right now?" Yeah, honey, look at them—they're white and they're wearing clothes. <laughs> why are you so? <laughs> yeah, it's so, and it's like, dude, motherfucker. And that's why, in a way, when I when I saw this, I was like, "Good." When they capped him, I was like, "Good, motherfucker, you didn't protect your family." Yeah, uh, you know, and Isaac brought up a good point about them being younger and stronger than him. You know, he tries to make a stand, he slaps him. And then they take them out. And I was thinking that as I was watching that too, like these guys are like, as I get older, the more and more I think like, man, some of these kids could fucking take me on. Like, I'm not much of a fighter anyhow, but Jesus. Christ. Also, like coming from the perspective of like thinking of like, he's an older guy and considering that, why are you going to slap them? 
<laughs> like, if you feel the need to take it to physical violence, make it like real violent. Because it's polite so, society. That's his polite society. Uh, the little pasha, pasha. You know what I mean? That's what it comes down to. Is it just reinforces this idea that politeness and for politeness' sake, once again, it's just weird. They live in this world where, you know, they have to put their best foot forward all the time. So even when a stranger enters their house and their things are going not well, they're still trying to be polite the entire time. And it's like I said, the villains are wonderful because they use that against them. They're so pasha and and border school and all that boarding school. I mean, and all that stuff. And it's just great to see. Um, I want to talk about uh, the fourth wall breaking. The first time it happens is whenever she's going to find the dog and he's playing the hot cold game. And I thought the games were going to ramp up like that. I was kind of okay with the fact that they didn't. I thought they were going to start with a small game and then ramp it up, ramp it up. They kind of do, but not, it's never like illuminated so much, but like he looked at, he turned and he looked at the camera and he looked away and I was like, did he just break the fourth wall? What the fuck just happened? And that was shocking. And me and Jay were kind of talking about that the other day. This movie is known for that, right? Isn't that kind of like what it makes it? Well, once you, once you see it, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You can only, you know, you only get the genie out of the lamp once. So anyone who saw the original will be like, okay, yeah, this isn't shocking at all. Right. Uh, so, yeah. And in the original, he turns to the camera and he winks in the original. He doesn't do that in this version, but in the original he did. Uh, but yeah. It's it's fucking crazy though. And when he they're having the conversation about making the bet, and he turns to the screen and he's like, "I bet you're on their side, aren't you? You want them to win, don't you? Well, we'll see how it fucking goes." And you're that's when I was like, "Holy shit!" He did look at the camera, and I was like, "That's so fucking cool." How did you guys feel whenever that happened? I mean, yeah, I thought. I mean, it's it's one of those things where you, like I said you then realize this isn't real and but it doesn't make it less horrifying you know and it doesn't make it less frustrating knowing that makes, he, take, he rewinds it and uh okay this isn't real you still just as a viewer you want revenge because you hate these kids so much and the family is so likable except for the dad who's a pussy but the family <laughs> and, and i mean it's just such a you look at that perfect naomi watts ass and you're like don't ruin that don't ruin <laughs> i agree with you hundred percent on that uh it makes you complicit too and and like you're watching something that's terrible as i watched it the dread was filling me so much i had to occupy myself with like texting and shit like that because it was so nerve-wracking for me watching it and like i was nervous as it was going through and i was just like i i can't look at the screen right now and what's wonderful is the violence is there but it's never seen they do the wonderful thing of where the violence is kept to a minimum even whenever they have the undressing scene you don't see like the nudity or anything like that. You, you see just the minimum and it's the horror on her face that really sells that moment. And I think that it's what you don't see is more terrifying, especially when it comes to the gunshot and it takes out the kid. This movie kills a fucking kid. How and did the you dog. Guys... Yeah, 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 the dog. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, just, it's one of those things we always talk about, like in, in cinema, you're never supposed to harm animals or children. And this movie was like, what, really? Okay. Yeah. How did Boom. the dog look so fucking real as it flopped yeah. out of the truck? When it plopped out, dude, and it rolled, I thought the same thing. That thing looked fucking real. Even in the original, it looked really real, too. How did they do that? They used real dogs. Oh, God, those, those bastards. Um, how about you, Isaac? When, uh, like the, whenever they killed the kid, all three of you guys, in that moment, did you expect that to happen and be so visceral? I knew no. that it was going to happen when I watched it again, and I still convinced myself the second time that it was the dad that was dead. Yeah. I knew that it wasn't, and still I was just like, "There's no, no, they're not doing that." Yeah. I mean, it goes against, like David said, the the horror movie or in movies in general, you don't attack children, you don't attack the elderly, and you don't attack animals. You know what I mean? This movie does two of the three. Well, I mean, and it's it's why why they can't be surprised that they spent fifteen million dollars on this movie and didn't make any money back. It oh, is, yeah, it is no not thing. enjoyable. <laughs> it breaks all the rules. This is not a fun movie. This isn't a movie you go see and you tell your friends at work or on the water cooler. Hey, Jim, how about that Cowboys game? Yeah, my wife and I just saw this movie called Funny Games. They kill a dog and a child. You should go check it out, man. Oh, by the way, spoiler alert. 
the spoiler alert, the the psychopaths get away with it, man. You should go check it out. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, unless you're freaks like us, this is what we talk about all the time. It's Dude, this is this is not a movie I recommend to people. I do oh, not. Well, yeah, I do not recommend. Sorry, I don't mean to. Yeah, sorry. Get about that. spoilers. Jump Jay, in the gun. Yeah, yeah, Jay, sorry. what were you gonna say? Oh, nothing. Yeah, the kid, the kid dying. Yeah, man, that's like. Uh... Most of the time, like, when a movie does that, or, like, any horror movie does that when they kill a kid, it's not like, I'm not happy it happens, but it definitely lets me know that said movie is not fucking around. I can respect, (laughs) I can respect the choice. Well, I mean, we're going to be talking about- Quiet Place. Well, we're going to talk about Children of the Corn in a couple months, and, I mean, if, 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 if you don't like children getting killed, stay the fuck away from that one. But well, um, I mean, Quiet Place, man, the balls on that movie to fucking and also Quiet Place to even put it in their trailer. They're just oh, like, yeah. hey, everyone, this is what's going to happen. This kid's going to fucking die right off the bat. Krasinski wasn't fucking around. He's like, no, putting this shit out there. It's, a, uh, it's, a, it's become a very it, it, I'm not saying it's become regular, but it's become a lot more regular in the past 20 years. It's a plot device. They what does that say about it. our society? <laughs> We're bored. That's yeah. exactly what it says. <laughs> yeah. oh, it takes a lot to push us. I think that the American version did a little bit classier. They hid the exploded head of the child behind the TV stand. The original does not do that. They full on show the exploded head of the child. I was like, holy fuck. That is insane that they put that out there. Um, how about the remote scene? Uh, breaking the fourth wall once again. Whenever they're doing the prayer scene and he's, he does the small prayer and he's having to repeat it and he pulls up her hands and, and, and really up there and like Naomi Watts is fucking killing it in this movie. Like, oh, he's so good. And, and a goddess, mind you. Top mm-hmm. 10, 100%. I think she's beautiful. Uh, but just acting her ass off in this movie. And like she sees that gun and she grabs it and she pulls it up and she blows Tubby away. I, I literally went, yeah, I screamed at the TV. Like, I was so excited. How about you guys? Were you, were you for that one moment of victory? How did you guys feel about that? Well, like I, when I watched the original, it was, it was like a relief. And then he, when he rewound it, I was like, God damn it. Yeah, 100%. And the rewinding, what, what did you say about the rewinding, Jay? You said that that was like what this movie is most known for, correct? Well, no, I mean, that's just, that's like, it's, it's definitely like, it's that point of no return where you're like, fuck yeah. And then it goes, yeah, whatever. We've got this. We uh, yeah. control. I, the I director's felt, once more saying, fuck you. Yeah. I felt abused watching this movie. Okay. Can I be, can I be uh, just upfront with you guys? Okay. Sure. Please don't hate me. I got, I, I went to watch this today and I got up to the scene where they hit the father and I was like, nope, I'm out. And I oh, yeah? Stopped. Yeah. I just yeah. I couldn't I couldn't do it again. I felt I felt like I was in a, an abusive relationship with my ex-girlfriend, the stripper, and she came over and we were about to have fuck. And then I remembered everything bad about her. <laughs> and so I So just, it triggered just, you. Oh yeah, big time. Big time. I, it, it just it it is so it was such an uncomfortable experience. I didn't want to go through it again. Right. No, that makes sense because like you said, this feels like an abusive relationship in a lot of ways. Uh, and like I said, it's all hidden underneath the, the guise of politeness. You know what I mean? That's what's so weird. And that's what narcissists and manipulators can do is they can be charming and superficial. I mean, the lead character in this, the lead villain, I should say, he's a pure narcissist. And on top of that, the dude's like a model. He looks like Gabriel the angel, what you would think that it would look like. And like he's everything that you would associate with a, you know, an angelic figure, and he ends up being a demon. It's so fucking weird. He's luciferic in some way. I apologize. Um, well, I, I always was amazed that Michael Pitts didn't have a bigger career. I always I thought, thought that he should have been the bigger. Purge. Was he in the Purge? No, no. I thought he was on the door. He, yeah, was, he uh, was on Boardwalk Empire for a very so. Long time. Oh my god, that first season. You talk about a fucked up that storyline with him, him and his mom. That first movie oh, yeah. was so fucked up. Um, he was the only thing good about the uh, Ghost in the Shell movie. He was great in that. Also, Bully. Did you guys ever see Bully? Mm-mm. He was in uh, Bully. The Tom Arnold, Rick Moranis. No, movie? no, no. The really dark, based on a true story movie. Also, um, no, he wasn't. Uh, oh, yeah, he, he played was, a small yeah, part. He, he played a small yeah, part. Yeah, a small, small part. part. Yeah. Um, and then he was amazing in um, a Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Yeah, yes. he was good in that. 
And then uh, uh, I think his tour de force was in Hannibal when he played Mason Verger. Mason yeah, yeah, I forgot. I don't that. fucking remember. I don't think I ever saw Hannibal. Oh man, oh, dude. It's so Hannibal good. is so good? up your fucking alley, David. Wait a minute, oh, yeah. the TV series, the TV yeah. series, yeah, TV series. Oh, yeah. I yeah. I started watching it and I really do enjoy it. I just I one of those things where it got away from me, but I'm gonna go back because I, I really dude. I've seen two episodes so far and it's fucking great. I love it. It's my girlfriend's favorite show and she hates horror stuff. Like she can't watch any of it. She loves Hannibal. She that is like her favorite TV show, hands down. And then um, also I heard he uh he was actually, um campaigning to play the riddler at one point oh wow that would have been been cool cool. yeah he's killer in this movie he's really good literally yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, for for you david and jay who've watched the remake uh over this original which one do you guys prefer which original original Original. i mean it's if if the second one doesn't do anything different uh yeah like i said it's pointless well, I mean, I mean, like it is and it isn't. I mean, like, yeah, if if it made money, would it be pointless? I mean, that's the but question we, you got to ask. We it put a it put a company out of business, so it sure is. It is. Pointless. Absolutely. <laughs> it's it, of all the movies to remake, like, I can only imagine the emotions because I guarantee he wasn't the only person from that original production that he brought back on. That must have been a that must have been a scary fucking rehash of a nightmare you thought you were over ten years earlier. Well, that's then, an experience. Then, I'd love to see the documentary on that, like remaking. Yeah. Well, t- Tim Roth. Tim Roth has never seen it because the actor who played his son looks just like his son, and it yeah. it, it traumatized him so much he has never seen the movie. The mm-hmm. other thing is, like I said, they rebuilt the house. It looks exactly like it did in the original movie. So shot for shot, they literally did that the best they could. And he initially wanted to make this as an American film, but he couldn't get the financing. So that's why he did it as an Austrian film. So he was, he wanted, this is like the movie he wanted to make and he got to make it twice. So I think that's pretty cool. Well, it it just, it's so weird to me that an American studio would look at this movie and cause, cause also you got to remember too, when this movie came out, Naomi Watts, she was like coming, she was a a star. She was a star. And I mean, it just blows my mind that somebody who saw this movie and was like, man, American audience was really dig this. You yeah. know, it's just not an American movie. Well, I mean, this, this has got German written all over it. Well, this is fucking German. You know what? You know what? I might have to disagree with you, Dave. Um, this movie came out during the absolute height of the Saw movies. I think this movie in American lexicon during 2007, I think... I think they thought that this was gotcha. exactly what people wanted, at least at this time. That's all I'm going to say about that. Also, Saw and also the um, Hostel movies, I think, were Hostel just came out yeah. about a year and a half, really. That's another that great example. A, yeah. it's such Hostel is the reason that I don't torture watch point. horror movies. <laughs> torture <laughs> porn ruined it for you. Yeah. It was like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I... Yeah, but but in those, in those movies... Well, I don't know about Saw. I never, I never really got into Saw, but at least in Hostel, the bad guys lose at the end. You know, at least there's some kind of like you well, know, the good guys they winning. Can, they convert the good guys to the bad guys. I, I do kind of like. I like Hostel. I like Saw movies up to a point, but I like the idea that it turned you off of horror movies. Eyes, like what was it about it that that made you? Oh, just the torture porn stuff. It was so graphic. It's one of the reasons that I can watch funny games is that all the really bad shit is off camera. Yeah. If it's terrible horror where it just looks shitty, I can be like, haha, whatever. But the hyper realism of the torture porn stuff, it really, really bothers me. Right. Yeah. I, with the Saw movies, it gets to me too. Sometimes I think about going back and marathoning them, but like towards the end, it's just brutal, brutal, brutal. I want to ask you guys this How far do you think they get? Do you think that this is some scenario where they can just keep killing families after family because he's in control? And that's the idea. Or do oh, you yeah, think it's, it's a game. They, it's a game. And when he loses control, he just rewinds it. So, yeah, they just keep on going. This is I always looked at this as like a video game that these kids were playing a video game. I was yeah. going to propose it's, it as their own personal heaven or purgatory or hell where they have total control of the scenario. Maybe that's what's going on. Go ahead, Jay. What were you going to say? No, I mean, like we covered a uh, brain scan. Uh, it's almost like if he completely uh, gave into the game. And I mean, I think that actually takes away from the scares a little bit. I just, it just my own personal opinion, just because it's like, okay, so it's a game. Uh, if if those two scenes aren't in there, 
or you know, it 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 does make it a little more. But you know, like at the end when he go when he's basically like he basically goes, maybe we'll come see you next. You know, it's like it's one of those things where you know it's it's very. I think that I think they actually do that too in their own messed up way. I think that is there to actually comfort you as an as a viewer. It's the smallest. It's literally the least amount of effort possible because I, I do agree with with Dave. You do want to see them get it. You don't want to see them die. You do want to see them get the comeuppance. But then it's like, hey man, it's like it's, we're just watching a we're just watching a movie. It's it's gonna be okay. I like that you. I didn't even think about that when he looks at the camera at the end. He's like, "We're coming to you next." Like I never even hey, thought about it. Hey, that. hey, guys! Since I didn't watch this because it traumatized me so much, um, the, is there ever any night scenes in this? I can't remember. Night scenes? You said night, night? at night. Is it all in the yeah. daytime? Yeah, like half the yes, movie. Yes, night. Oh, half the yeah, movie because they show up in the evening, and then it's gotcha, like you got to last gotcha. twelve hours. Yeah. Oh, you bet yeah, you won't gotcha, last. Gotcha. That's the game. Yeah, and then. Um, uh, like I like how Jay was saying it's kind of a cautionary tale, you know. Like you said, are you next? And like David said, that triggered him, you know. You know, like it's something he's concerned about constantly. That's pretty. It is pretty scary. Do you think that it changes the movie if they don't break the fourth wall, or do you think it works the same way? I mean, it, it's it still is frustrating because they get don't get away with it. But like what Jay said, it takes the edge off if you know it's fake. Yeah. Maybe but that's the whole point of this was the guy was making an, an allegory about violence in media. So that's why he put that in there also. Was it like, hey, this is like a video game. Hey, this is like a movie. Hey, this is like the news, you know? So that's it's very much kind of like why he put, put that in there as well. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is, like you said, the ending where no one wins. Ciao, Bella, wherever he knocks her over into the uh, river and they just go on talking like they were talking the whole time. And they've been doing that the entire movie where they're kind of disinterested in their victim, which is even more unsettling. It could have been anyone. It just happened to be their house that they go into. Uh, at the end of it, like, how do we feel about this movie as a whole? It really comes down to that, you know, what, what these killers stand for. I don't know what they stand for other than just pure violence and psychopaths and and like Jay made the, the connection to Columbine, you know, Eric and Dylan, what, what do they stand for at the end of the day? I don't know. Uh, and I guess that's why it's so unsettling. How do you guys feel about the end of the movie? I was glad it was over. <laughs> I was like, well, this nightmare is done. And that's what was weird. I don't know why I watched the, I think I watched the remake because of Naomi Watts. I think yeah. I was like, oh, this is going to be uncomfortable. I do like her. And also, I knew how it would end, so I was preparing myself. But man, today it was just rough. Yeah. This is just this is just it's like I said, movie. man. I, yeah, it's. I think it's a brilliant movie. I really do. But I think it's for me, it's so unenjoyable. The day ruiner. I, I I was happy I had improv classes after it because I was just like, yay, it's great. Maybe that's why I was so tired the other night, Jay. <laughs> I was like, I'm so tired. Maybe this movie took it out of me. How about you, uh, Isaac? How do you feel about the ending of this movie? I, I mean, the ending is the worst part because you think that you're going to get some relief the whole time. Like, again, this is only my second time seeing it. I've never seen the original. So I still almost expected like, ah, oh, maybe I forgot the part where it doesn't end quite so terribly. Uh, it reminds me of a movie that I saw that was loosely based on Casey Anthony, I think, uh, called Baby Blues where basically uh, the dad's a truck driver and the mom is losing her mind and thinks he's cheating on her and decides to kill all the kids and the oldest one. It's like a night in hell where he, he's being chased by her through the farmhouse. And uh, basically at the end of the movie, you think he's gotten away and dad's like, oh no, she's coming home. She cares about us. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding? Like <laughs> nothing from this? Uh, but stories like that tend to stick with me. But that's what the, these characters, what the, these villains, what do they get from that? Nothing. They've gotten not, This is just another family. They're just moving on. They're just moving on. There's never. There's no lesson to be learned here. There's They're leveling up. A hundred percent. On to the next one. On to the next one. On to the next one. Jay, how do you feel about the ending of this movie? I feel like it's uh, a depressing. Cast. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's well, it's a depressing movie. You know, we need. I mean, like, let's let's be real. We I, I know I brought this up before, but you know, this is a it's a horror. This is a horror podcast. 
And one of the things about being a horror podcast is that we're not supposed to enjoy all these movies. If we did, we wouldn't even... I think if we did enjoy all these movies, we wouldn't enjoy all these movies, if that makes sense. It's just like in life, you got to find things that, that, that kind of piss you off a little bit. There's movies every now and then where you go, no, no, that's not how it's supposed to end. I think another movie I would compare to this would be uh, Arlington Road uh, with Jeff Bridges and... Uh, and and uh oh god mr susan sarandon uh what's the guy tim tim what, is that is that the movie about a bomber yeah yeah and I remember at that. the end of the at the end of the movie the bomber the I'll, spoiler bomber wins uh the the hero dies and the bomber keeps on bombing and that was also uh that also came out around the turn of the century too so it's just yeah these movies that that don't give you give you all, all the things you want it's it's interesting they because they have you place. say that, and it's like, I really, really, really did not enjoy this movie. But another movie that has one of the most depressing endings of all time, I absolutely love, and that's Seven. Um, and I think it's because in that world, I don't see myself in that world. Yeah. I can see myself in funny games. I can see yeah. myself, me and Lindsay, being at home and someone doing a home invasion. I think that's the difference, is I can watch Seven and enjoy it as a escapism even though the ending is brutal the, the basically the bad guy gets away with it in that one he completes his mission of but he still all the dies seven, so he still dies but he but that's what he but he wants to die though that's the thing it's not like he didn't want to die he wanted uh some or uh, uh david to kill him um so he wins in getting what he wants even somerset tells him if you shoot him he wins so but in that movie it's more of escapism uh, because I don't see myself ever being in a situation where I'm living in a in a uh, weird city where all these weird murders are happening. <laughs> By the way, I think I came to a realization that at some point in my life, I have uh, committed at least one deadly sin at some point in my life every single, not and some at the same time. So. Yes, I have too. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say what I like about uh, this is the bad guy is so manipulative he is literally manipulating the audience as the movie goes along. And I think that's really cool with breaking the fourth wall and everything, like how he's saying, like, you know, do you, do you think they're going to win? Are you betting on them? And then whenever he says later, like, do you want a good story with a, a protagonist who's victorious or whatever he says? Uh, and he's just like, that's maybe not what you're going to get. And that's what we don't get, you know? Oh, he's definitely torturing the audience for sure. Yeah, it's crazy. It's such a cool concept. Guys, is there anything else about the movie that you want to talk about? Or are we ready to move on? <laughs> All I'm right, still curious on. as to why uh, that kid took off his pants when he was hiding from him. Because he shit his pants. I get pants. the boots. I get the boots. Why did he take off his pants? He shit his pants. Do you remember? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, pants. I'm sorry I brought this up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. a point, counterpoint. Yes, done, done. All right. Anything else about the movie? Anything now, at all? Na Naomi Watts has an amazing ass. That's yes, I guess. That's, that's <laughs> Naomi Watts. Not within, the, for the not within the context of this movie, but yes, she does. Uh, all right. Recommend Jay. Do you recommend the movie? Uh, or original, vers original versus remake too. You can recommend. I uh, you uh, either one. I mean, they're just uh, if you think that you can handle the subject material, then yeah, go for it. That's right. what I'd say. It, David, do you recommend it? No, I, I don't. I don't want to have anyone in my life that I would think would enjoy this movie. So no, I don't want to recommend this because I think to recommend it to somebody, they would have to enjoy it, and if they enjoyed it, they would scare the fuck out of me. And it takes a lot to scare me. I have mannequins in my house. <laughs> Isaac, do you recommend the movie? Uh, I would recommend it to somebody oh. that I liked but didn't want to have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Like you've been talking a little shit. Like I'm not too mad. We can still be friends. But like, check this out this evening, buddy. Oh my yeah, god, hundred percent. I recommend it, David. I'm gonna scare you. I liked it. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought it was a good movie. It's not something. Oh, it's, you see it's a day. great movie. I, I, like it's, I said, it's a great movie. It's just not enjoyable for me. Oh Psycho. no. It's pure. Yes, thank you. Pure. Let me turn to the camera and say it. Thank you. Uh, pure <laughs> dread. Pure. Uh, just pure nightmare fuel and like i said just because it's so real and visceral and like it takes so little to take you know the the dad out it's a golf club swing that's real 
That is real. The fact that he can't do anything and he can't. Oh, God, it's just so fucking real. Anyhow, with that said, I recommend it. Let us move on to clips. Dave, are you going to be able to handle these? Yeah, I'll, I have a safe space. I'll go to okay. it if I need to. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's just Duck jumping in here real quick to say thank you so much for checking out the podcast today. If you're enjoying it, head over to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, or iTunes, and give We Are Podcast Network a like. And just so you know, the next section of the podcast will be clips from the movie, so you can find replays of the live video stream at twitch.tv backslash We Are Podcast Network and youtube.com backslash We Are Podcast Network. Once again, all links can be found in the description. Come check out our live stream every Monday at 8 p.m. And for a full list of future films, check out our social media. You can find us at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at backslash we are podcast. And with that, back to the horror cast. All right, let's get some clips. They're short clips, so don't worry. All right, moving on from that. You know, Naomi right. Watts was 39 when they made this. Oh, yeah. Oh. She's amazing. She's just and a so, little bit older than you, right, Dave? Yep. To objectifying her, I'm sorry. Please don't cancel me. Oh wait, I don't I do anything. Say, have you been? Have you been to the We Are Podcast Network before? <laughs> uh, Ducks kind of music. Oh, this was funny. I like this. As an audience member, you know you're like, what the fuck is gonna happen? Can you imagine not knowing what this movie was about and just seeing the actors and being like, oh, this looks fun? I had no idea what it was about. I was pumped when they did this. I was like, fuck yeah, that's cool. Uh, Ducks kind of music again, evidently. I'll be there. The I'll come over. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, the nerve wrackingness of uh, the movie. 20 minutes. Okay, great. See you then. Bye. Seems weird. Yeah. She didn't say a word. Eggs. This fucking scene is intense, too. And, so. and we forgot to mention the long shots. This movie takes its time. In a good way, spawn of the slithus in a bad way. Yeah. This movie holds on stuff, holds on the moment, is able to allow long, long shots. I think the longest shot in this movie is like 12 minutes long. It's insane how they hold on this guy. How can I help you? Mrs. Thompson sent me. She's cooking and she ran out of eggs and asked if you could help her it's out. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Oh, please say hello to Reed. He's not bad at all. I'm looking forward to the game tomorrow. I'll tell her. Thanks again. And, and thanks to Fred and your friends. Oh, be... What happened? It's not a disaster. <laughs> that was one of the things I thought was weird. The dialogue in this was a little bit weird. I was like, it's not a disaster. Who says that? All right. It begins. You better be careful, old man, or I'll break your eggs. <laughs> now, please leave. Right now. Mr. Farber. What? <laughs> oh, brutal. <sighs> And then that kindness afterwards, you know, is it broken? I can fix it up if you want me to. Just so fucking creepy. All right, breaking the fourth wall. Cold. And at first I was like, I kind of looked past that. I was going to rewind it, but I decided not to. So the next victims. It's supposed to be windy for tomorrow. I just Where's told Robert dog? probably going to get stuck. Excuse me? Your, your dock. Oh, it's just around the peninsula, but on the other side. The old cottage with the red dock? Right. Sounds very beautiful. Well, thank you. We enjoy it. Brutel. You do not want to see this. It is a brutel. Here. Take this, is, this is where you stopped, right, David? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we can skip What's it. What's this now? What have happened to you? It's just. <laughs> Didn't we just agree that? Oh. Uh, we... We'll skip it. Move on to the next. What the <laughs> fuck? I, I don't want to trigger Dave anymore. White trash. Truth is, he's fucking her. <laughs> Sad, but it's. Do you think there's any truth behind this story that he's yes. telling? You think so? Because yeah, I, I don't. He's, you don't think? You think it's all play? Yeah, What's I mean, it, the whole thing is, immediately after he's like, oh, and we're drug addicts. We're both drug addicts. It, like, he, he's so convincing all the time, but when he's doing this, it sounds like bullshit. Right. Like, he's doing bad <laughs> acting on purpose. Yeah. 
and then like like I said, just making up an excuse. And I like when the father just turns to the camera. He's like, he's like, I get it, I get it. Oh come on, calm down now, Tubby. Stop it. You're disgusting. This was awesome. Why was it awesome? It's not an option. There has to oh, be yeah. that. Breaking the fourth Wait, What wall. do you think? You think they stand a chance? You're on their side, aren't you? Who are you betting on, hmm? But, wait, what kind of bet is this? I kind of like how the other characters ignore that, too, completely. I thought that was pretty cool. Cat in the Bag. This is pretty intense. This Violence is an against awesome children. Game. Do. It's called Cat in the Bag. It's really fun. Here we go. <laughs> Don't panic. Nothing's going to happen. I said it was a fun game. It's a family game. Hey, Daddy can play, too, so he doesn't get bored. I'd be interested to know, do you think it's more or less monstrous if they covered up the kid's face as they did that? Oh, that's a good point. Um, I think either way, it's just terrible, really. The whole thing is just terrible. I don't know. Uh, and then, like I said, I like with that scene, too, they never show the nudity, but they show her reaction to the nudity, which is enough. Like, it's just so, you know, dehumanizing that it's just it's terrible. And um, lingering on the kid's face in the bag? Yeah, well, they pull it really tight, too. I was hoping for a while that, like, they use, like, a mannequin or something like that. Because I was like, man, I hope they didn't hurt this kid. Um, they wouldn't have this music in their house. This is dumb. There is no way they would. This is the I'm other house. play a little music for us. They wouldn't have that. That's stupid. Georgie's got a gun. Pull the trigger. Oh, Man, he's got so dick sucking lips. <laughs> not him, not him. Michael Pitts. Oh, damn. Oh, no. oh, oh, damn. So clarify, so clarify. I didn't realize it was. Yeah, there we, there we go. There we go. NASCAR sucks. Oh, I forgot to mention this. This seems so intense because in the background you have the the the, the mono the mono what's the word monotone droning of the NASCAR announcers and the cars going. That's what makes it so fucking intense. So who do you want to start with? With her? Good. Now I'll get something to eat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. It's intense. You idiot, Tubby. When you're counting, you don't kill the person who's counted out. You kill the one left over. What's wrong with you? You try to run away. Guess so what? That's no reason to get trigger happy. Don't you have any sense of timing? Can you imagine being Juan Matoye, the driver, and being like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> the hell am I in this movie? Why oh, I got kids' happen? brains all over my picture. <laughs> so that scene where she's struggling to get up, there is no way she didn't hurt herself during that. Oh, yeah. There's a yeah, couple of knocks where I was just like, oh, shit. Yeah. She was dedicated, like I said. Like, she, she kills it in every movie she's in. So uh, the funny game. The game is The Loving Wife. Now, although Beavis has already finished counting, Anne can decide who's up next and with which device. Hello? Wake up! What? You're not interested? You don't want to play anymore? Beavis, show her how the game is played. Wait, here. Watch out! I almost cut myself. Really? So intense. Just watching it back right now. Oh. Right here, right here. She kills it. Come on, sit down, sit down, sit down. That had to have been improvised. Had to have been. Was that in the it's original? Do you guys remember? I don't no? remember. I didn't die. Oh, I apologize. Everyone's so bummed out. Tubby, I'm so sorry, guys. Tell her one. Stop calling me Tubby all the time. Okay, fine. Call me, call me Unibrow, okay? I'm oh. Unibrow. Not I noticed that too. I was like, what the fuck? Dave, that fucking thing, man. What are you, a, <laughs> a Gallagher you brother in Oasis? <laughs> You're the <laughs> bass player for Oasis? Oasis is a I'm 90s sure. pop band. I don't know any others. Hey. 
fucking with, with big with big Isaac? with big fucking uh with big fucking eyebrows. <laughs> Fuck and yeah, dreams. this part was awesome. Everyone Whether get a little relief right now. Almost painless big gun or the slow drawn out Boom baby. Look out! Yes. The remote scene. Almost immediately after that. I'm not sure why it's coming up. Where's the, where's the remote control? Notice he doesn't hit rewind on the Fucking remote. Fucking remote control. Too. Yeah. He hits the volume think, down, I think. Yeah, I think that's what he does. <laughs> rewind right underneath it. Uh, I don't take it back. Oh, lame. Lame. So lame. All right, we're skipping to the end. There it is. This will be the last one we have to deal with, y'all. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella. Why? Because that was nine. It's almost another hour. Well, it's too difficult to say I like this. First of all, Second of all, I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> it's true. Oh, that's that's so nerve-wracking. Just the way he's just like, I'm getting kind of hungry, like it's fucking nothing. So, with that said, we made it through clips downer of a movie. Still appreciate the recommendation, Isaac. Uh, I'm going to recommend a couple movies here real quick and see if you guys agree. The first one will be a movie called Cheap Thrills. This came out a couple years ago. It is awesome. It has, uh, uh, shoot, what's his name? The guy from uh, Anchorman who plays uh, the weather guy. Who, what's, what is his name? Or the sports guy, Champ. I cannot think of his name. Uh, David anyhow, Kirshner. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This movie is fucking awesome. I watched it over at Jake's house. We had a blast. It's about this guy right here, uh, David Kirshner's character, who has tons of money. And he sets up dares throughout the night for two friends that haven't seen each other since high school, the two characters right there that you saw. And everything elevates and elevates and elevates and elevates. It's hilarious. It's scary. It's just downright good movie. Highly, uh, highly suggested. Check it out. Lots of ass in this trailer too. Jesus Christ. Uh, Cheap Thrills. Awesome movie. 100%. So good. Next one. I'm going to <laughs> next movie we're going to recommend is the purge of course everyone's seen the purge right the first one classic modern horror film about home invasion totally scary love everything about it uh the premise is so good it's had five sequels now i think we just had another one come out but the original is the one that holds up the most i feel and it's just a great movie plus i love the creepy little robot the kid has in the movie I figured, David, you'd be on, on board with that. Oh, I, I, I love the first Purge. Yeah. Other than that, a little bit played out now. There's some of the sequels did some interesting stuff, but for the most part, that's where we're at. Uh, admit you, you fucking fuck. Uh, Javi wants him to join us for the end of the cast. So he is coming in right now. Boom, boom, boom. With that said, do you guys have any recommendations? Yes, uh, as uh, uncomfortable uh, home invasion type movies. Uh, have you guys ever seen Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer? Watched it uh, a month ago. My, Michael, oh, Richard, is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. you talk about real. That's a legit real movie. Yeah, that that felt that feels like a fucking straight up uh, snuff film. Yeah, Javi, you came into uh, the cast. Uh, if you can feel the heavy vibes of the movie that we watched. All right, here's what's going to happen. I don't know this new guy. I'm pretty sure he has some valid points, but for Jay and David, they were all wrong. <laughs> they were wrong on all their criticisms with this movie. This movie was great. I'm sure these two slobs hated it. So fuck them and fuck no. you, Bobby Frisky, for showing no. me small the slippers. I never want to see that movie again. Awful. No, never. Listen, no, no. We, I never, I never said the movie. I, I was very adamant in saying I think this movie is genius. It's just not enjoyable. It's downright aggravating. Like, this is more infuri infuriating than fucking uh, Clockwork Orange. Like, just when I thought that motherfucker finally got, I stood up and cheered when yeah. I saw that fucker get out with the shotgun. And then fucking Michael Pitt, the fucking asshole, I'm glad he got divorced from that actress just because of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, he takes the remote and he rewinds it and then he stops it. Like, what the fuck? 
Fuck you. But yeah, it's such a good movie. Such a good movie. It's a great movie, but it's not fun, man. This isn't this isn't fun. This no. is not fun. It's a day ruiner, is what it is. Yeah. Javi well, came up. Welcome to the day. hour and a half conversation, Javi. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hey, Javi. Is... Javi, who would win a fight between the Splithis and Biohunter? <laughs> you know what? Uh I gotta hate them both equally. Uh you know, I want to go with the Biohunter. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Because the, the Slith is just a, like a decrepit old man in a fish suit. That's all it is. At, at least the bio hunter got decapitated and all the other shit that goes with it. The Slith has got an anchor to the chest. That was it. that's that's only <laughs> an, an awful scream. So th- yeah. this move, this movie is in the list of movies that you should not you should not have watched during the pandemic when we are all sitting at home and depressed. It was this, The Road, uh, Requiem for a Dream. Like movies to avoid during the pandemic. Yeah, you know, you know, it's a good day for you. if you know if it's the pandemic and you're gonna unalive yourself. Watch the road, follow it up with this one, and then anything <laughs> else, and then go out right then and there. Like, okay, life could not get any worse than this right now. <laughs> uh, Javi, we'll give you a quick recommend, yes or no. Recommend this movie absolutely, yeah. but only one ever watch it only one time in your life. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch this movie for fun because you think it's a good movie, I think you're a serial killer. You should probably be committed somewhere. Yep. All right. Recommendations. We're doing recommendations. Anyone else have recommendations for home evasion movies or anything along the genre? Yeah, I got but, a couple. I got a couple. One is uh, The Strangers. Oh, oh that, so good. Yeah, that's definitely uh, that's definitely up there. Uh, it's it's got an ending very similar to this. Spoiler, but uh, they actually had a sequel to that one as well. Um, so yeah, The Strangers would be pretty good. Also, if you like a movie with about games, is that movie I mentioned to y'all earlier? Uh, it's called Love Me If You Dare. It's a uh, it's a French movie, and the idea behind it is that these two childhood friends uh, they have this carousel. It's a toy carousel. I see this. And as they get older, they pass the carousel to each other. And the reason it's called Love Me If You There is because whoever gets handed the carousel has to do the dare. And this goes oh, wow. throughout their entire life. It is one of the greatest French movies I've ever seen. So I highly recommend it. And it's got a little bit of that terror involved in it, too. Isaac, you got any other recommendations for uh, horror or uh, home invasion? I know you don't really do horror, so it's anything. Hey, real, real quick, before I forget, I didn't mean to cut you off. What's the French invasion movie? Where the lady has the, the chainsaw type of thing. High tension. Yes. Amelie. Yes. yes. Uh, you, who the fuck did Amelie? <laughs> I God did. You got a problem with Amelie? Oh, Amelie's amazing. No, I love, I love <laughs> Amelie. Go ahead, Isaac. I'm sorry. I mean, the only thing I can think of, it, it's not a horror movie per se, uh, but Kids reminds me of it in just oh, the way that it's oh, just like, uh, Kids uh, is it good. Starts and Larry it's Clark. Fine. It's going to be fine. And now it's just worse. And it's worse. Oh, and it's worse, and now it's over. Oh well, why don't why don't we why don't we uh, slap on gummo while we're at it, motherfucker? <laughs> and, and let's finish that off with bully. I mean, if we're yeah, gonna be like yeah, going yeah, on our exactly. clock, let's go the whole. Go, let's go all out. Let's go all out. We mentioned bully earlier because of Michael Pitt. That's right, dude. Bully was so uh, fucking good. Oh, you bully. got a you got a home. That's a Dallas movie. actor. The Dallas actor's in that. Uh, yeah, I got a, I got a, a a great recommendation for home invasion. It's called Home Alone. Yeah. Yeah. That is we, one of the greatest. We made that joke. Yeah. I Obvi, missed it. I missed it. You, Avi, you are like thirty minutes behind. Uh, you were thirty minutes behind. <laughs> All right, the ball. home invasion are- movie. Uh, I I do like uh, Last House on the Left. Oh. Nailed it. Oh. Nailed it already. Yeah, we already got Fuck. it. Yeah, you are the Langolier of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you are chopping up the past as we speak. I'm not. No, I'm not trying to defend. But if you listen back, you will be like, "Yeah." And here's another thing. And like you'll be like, "Well, this sucks." Well, you should have just joined us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just finished early. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just outed yourself, motherfucker. Uh, That's I don't, funny. I don't care. I got a hair trigger. Yeah. She did she look you in the eyes? Is what happened? <laughs> she looked me in the eye and I was like, I'm sorry, game is over. <laughs> All right, let's go to where we can find us on the internet. We're gonna start with Jay right now because Jay's got some internet stuff going on. Where can they find you, Jay? Uh, you can find me at Facebook.com slash ego phoenix for the seventh annual Ego Phoenix Fearcast set. It's the world tour. This is a very Interesting uh, choice to do this year. I uh, use a random country generator uh, populated by Giga Calculator, and every day I get a new country. Uh, I've already gotten uh, Guinea Bissau, which was a lot of fun, and I got to talk about a movie called Saloom, which is uh, a, basically what they call it an African version of From Dusk Till Dawn. 
Uh, it just came out. I can't wait to see it. I got to find it. Today I got Gabon, and I'm exploring some of the folklore. I mean, there's so many countries in Africa, so it's probably gonna probably gonna hit a few uh, here and there. So that's uh, that's what I got going on. Very cool, David. How about you? Where can they find you? State Fair, right? Yes, I'll be at the State Fair of Texas. It's Friday at 8:30 for Deep Fried Comedy, and then you can find me on Facebook at Stop Motion Nightmares and Children of Dave. Um, on Instagram. I just sold a shit ton of art last night. So thank you with nice. all the weirdos that came out to the burlesque show and bought all my weird creepy shit, which means Congrats. I gotta make more creepy shit. Very cool. Javi Isaac, you guys got anything you want to pimp? Javi's been painting live on Facebook and Instagram. I have really good and stuff, I, Javi. Really thank you, I appreciate stuff, it. Man. And also, if you do have a Brinks Home Security account, feel free to call the customer service number and ask for Javi, and I'll be more <laughs> than happy to talk to you about whatever. I'm just not gonna, yeah. You can find me at Brinks. How did Brinks not sponsor this fucking movie? They missed a huge opportunity. You're right. This movie is one big infomercial for security systems. That's why Harvey popped in. Guns, ammo. That's why Harvey popped in at the end. Just to bring the Brinks. You got quotas to make, Harvey. Oh, Oh my God. You got quotas, bud. Nerd. I I do got quotas. Good catch. You made me laugh so hard. I, I lost my butt there. Isaac, you got anything to pimp? Uh, I'm on Facebook at Isaac Doggett, and uh, I cook food on TikTok occasionally at This Food Fucks. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. And finally, you can find us at wearepodcast.podbean.com, where you can find all the podcasts. We are Arrow, We are Bagoo, Camp Slash Warcast. And uh, there's another one in there. Oh, I hate being sober. I've been doing a couple of those. Uh, check out our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at backslash we are podcast for the WAP and reviews where I review video games and stuff of that sort. And finally, you can find us every Monday for camp slash horror cast where we talk horror movies from the past at 8 p.m. Central time. Next week will be the faculty. I cannot wait. We're going to have Diego Rangel on this show for the faculty. It's going to be awesome. Uh, such a great movie. Robert Rodriguez, Elijah Woods, just killing it. Also, that uh, super CGI hot chick. doesn't hold, hold up too well. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen it in like 12 years, dude. I can't it wait. John Stewart. Hold up too well. So, we got John Stewart in that. John Stewart's in that. With that said, keep horror in your heart. Isaac, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for. Yeah, thanks, in- Isaac, for choosing thanks. this film. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for ruining <laughs> David's day. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> No, dude, it's cool. It's cool. It was better yeah. than Spawn of the Slippers. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Bobby, yeah. we love you. Yeah, yeah. Bobby, yeah that, love that you. bar is set pretty fucking low, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, keep pouring your heart. With that said, I'm going to cut the feeds. If I can remember how to do it. How do I cut feeds? God damn it. Where's the engineer when you need him? No doubt. Where is Ethan? Fucking. Yeah, he Classic is. Ethan. Yeah, he is. Keeping that in. I'm keeping that in. And there it is. Thank you again so much for checking out the podcast today. If you enjoyed it, head over to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and iTunes, and give We Are Podcast Network a like. And since this is Camp Slash Horrorcast, if you want to check us out live, we will be on Twitch and YouTube every Monday at 8 p.m. Central Time. You can find us at twitch.tv backslash We Are Podcast Network and youtube.com backslash We Are Podcast Network. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, you're going to love the other podcasts here on the We Are Podcast Network. We have We Are Air, where we talk movies, entertainment, whatever the fuck we want to talk about. That's me, that's Jake, and that's Javi. We're breaking down that pop culture, and we're having so much fun. And don't forget to check out We Are Bagoo, a video game podcast where we talk Atari to Steam and everything in between. That's me and Dr. Ethan Eastwood breaking down all that video game lore. Heroes, Jeros, a Dungeons and Distractions side quest. Me and the boys were playing some D&D. You can start that one from Season 1, Episode 1. It's a blast the whole way through. And I hate being sober. Personal stories from epic people. I sit down with some of my favorite people of all time. We talk about their trials, their tribulations, and their journey this far. Also, check the links in the description for our social media. You can find us at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at backslash we are podcast network. With that said, hopefully we see you in the live stream. <laughs>